this is Mike again. We've uh, picked up the KSP 1.05 tutorial. Um, I did fly one uh, basic mission, uh, just nipping the edge of space and giving some science using a remote probe actually, um, just to open uh, advanced rocketry. Uh, that only actually for the bigger fuel tanks. I did also upgrade one building to launch pad so that we'll handle larger and heavier rockets. Uh, those larger fuel tanks will allow us to build the rockets we need at this point. Uh, we do have an active contract I picked up to test a THUD uh, liquid fuel engine on a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. However, it has to be triggered at an altitude of 240 to 250,000 kilometers. Um, I picked that up not with an intent to actually do it, but just to have the thuds open in our parts inventory. Uh, we will eventually fail on it and it will cost us money, but I wanted to have that part available. While you have an open contract to test a part, that part will be available for whatever else you want to use it on. A bit cheaty, but handy. Let's actually do a pure science mission and we can pick up some money with some uh, world first and records in any case. Uh, speaking of which, on the one you didn't see me do, we did escape the atmosphere, and we broke some records to make some money. But let's see if we can do something useful. Actually, I know what we can do. Let's do one short mission to get enough science to build the, uh, the science dragster. That should open your tier out just about as far as you know. This was that one I was going to run and didn't. And frankly, it wouldn't hurt to level Jebediah, so we will go ahead and take this probe core off. We will make the capsule the root part. Get rid of the state button. Rig. So we're going to take a pretty, uh, pretty standard basic Mark One capsule. Um, we are overdoing the parachutes, as per usual. We will even take the precaution of putting heat shield on it. We will additionally... Actually, let's go ahead and put... We'll go ahead and put a couple of thermometers on it. So two thermometers, two goo canisters, Science Junior. And Jeb. Depending on how much Delta V we can get in this without breaking the system, we're limited to uh, our tonnage is no longer a problem due to the launch pad being upgraded. Our maximum parts is 30. So that's our limiting factor. Which means, of course, that we do need to be as cheap as possible with parts placement. We do have the Terrier because we opened rocketry. That upper stage on its own has a fair bit of delta V. That being the case, if we can get this into orbit, we can potentially do a moon flyby with that with a moderate amount of luck. If not, we can at least get an astronaut into high um, high orbit and gather science that way. To get him into high orbit though, realistically, that actually caps us out at our 30 parts. So you've got two SRBs, a very long, pointy rocket manned with appropriate science gear, and staged correctly, it looks like. We will see if we can, well, we'll definitely get this into orbit. Is there just nobody in it? Oh, Jeb, get in there. Very nice. Okay. So with Jeb aboard, this may immediately spin out and be humorous and fun. 
We do have our pilot aboard though, so we do have SAS. Well, let's see if we can get this in orbit. Plenty of thrust right now. We're just passing 100 meters per second. I'm going to pitch a tiny bit, as usual, towards 90. Pitching to the west means you're using the rotation of the planet to aid you. This thing is moving right along. Passing Mach 1 and continuing to rise. The reaction wheel is really not capable of pitching over against the force of those SRVs. Um, I could maybe force it. That would probably be bad. We're going to jettison our SRVs. We are now pitched at 45 degrees, which is good. Hold that there. Apoapsis is already 72. That's enough for orbit. Um, we're going to... Now we're still 46,000 feet. Where do we add Apoapsis now? 81,000. We're going to actually stop thrust. pitch over as we're coasting. We're at 59,000 meters. There's basically no atmosphere here to worry about. And there's the stars coming out. So we pitched over. On a 90 degree heading. So due west. At 70,000 meters, I'm throttling back up. I'm pitching the nose down slightly because I know our apoapsis is 80,000. So I'm going to actually angle this below the horizon as part of the burn. I'm going to angle this down pretty hard. I'm angling down about 10 degrees. As well, it looks funny, we are in fact still rising. We're trying to get as much forward momentum as we can. Because we're nowhere near an orbital velocity, we just passed a kilometer a second and we need two, basically. We're right on our apoapsis now. I'm going to lean us back so that we have no climb rate at all, right on the horizon. And keeping this thing throttled full open. Well, we will definitely make orbit. We're going to get into our upper stage to finalize that orbit, it looks like. We're not going to have enough delta-v in this rocket just uh, probably because we didn't manage to pitch over sufficiently during the takeoff. Our angle was uh, actually fairly bad all the way up. We're going to be close, though. We just passed two kilometers a second. And that would be orbit. We're going to need to make a little more altitude. We've sloppily ended up with a periapsis of 46,000. To be honest, we can probably skip through the atmosphere and burn at the apoapsis, but let's, let's not and say we did. Actually. So now we're not going to enter the atmosphere. Our orbit's 
pretty terrible. <laughs> it's a 70, 7161 orbit. But it is more or less equatorial. Even that's not very well done. That was a terrible orbiting attempt on my part. There's the moon. We have sufficient fuel, I would think, for a moon flyby. Let's F5 in case we mess this up. We're going to want to burn toward the moon about at the point when you see the moon come above the shoulder or the horizon of Kerbin. And you're going to be running to just be burning prograde at that point. Now it is quite possible to miss the moon doing this. You're still early in the career, you do not have <laughs> the ability to set nodes, maneuver nodes, or really see what you're doing. You're, this is strictly seat of the pants sort of stuff. At the least, we should be able to get a decent flyby. So let's go ahead and turn ourselves prograde. So we'll be lined up properly to actually burn. There's the moon. We are now burning on that prograde vector. What that's going to be doing is pushing, it's going to be pushing our orbit out opposite our burn. Our apoapsis is going up rapidly. We still have a reasonable amount of fuel, but we don't really want to overdo this. It would be nice to be able to get Jeb back. We're going to want to stop our burn. Intersecting the orbit of the moon. Hopefully, here actually, we should get an encounter there with any luck whatsoever. If not, we've got plenty of fuel to uh, make landfall again on Kerbin. So either way, we'll get some good science out of this. So we'll time accelerate out and see where we are in relation. Okay on electric power. So it looks like we're going to actually cross the orbit early. If we don't get lucky and catch it on the back side, uh, we're going to miss the moon on this pass. Oh, we did, in fact, catch the moon. Okay. We've caught it backwards, interestingly enough. Um, not a problem. We'll make that work. What we're going to want to do... We could actually just fly by, to be honest. Maybe it's safest to just do a flyby here. We shouldn't eject from the Kerbin system on this. We should remain trapped by Kerbin on coming out, although we can decelerate slightly at our periapsis if we so desire. But let's uh, let's make the assumption that we're going to be fine. We should now count as high over the moon. So, get a crew report from Jeb. He's very excited. He can see the moon and he's close enough to reach out and touch it. The goo is excited about being here as well. Even the thermometer is mildly excited. Science Junior will go ahead and observe the materials bay here. That's 50 science on its own. 
we cannot do an EVA with Jeb yet. We have not upgraded the uh, astronaut complex, which is unfortunate. But let's go ahead and we'll uh, we'll scoot up to our nearest approach to the moon at perihelion, periapsis, technically. So we're not exactly on top of it, but we are making a nice pass of the moon. That's pretty. You've got Kerbin, the moon, and the sun all in one spot. Now, assuming we don't eject, if we do eject, if magically we come past this and we've caught just enough of a gravity exist to escape Kerbin, which I doubt, uh, we'll actually do some braking. We've got plenty of delta V to avoid any uh, horrible accidents. No lost in space goodness at this point. Now we're easily t caught in Kerbin's SOI. As a matter of fact, we're currently going to sock into Kerbin. Well, it's not a terrible angle of entry. You know, we can try. We're going to do a massive braking burn. <laughs> but we'll try a, we've got a heat shield. We'll go ahead and try a hot, a hot entry on this. We will, oh, before I forget though, while we're in high orbit but not in the moon sphere of influence, we'll test our other mystery goose sample. That's a bunch of science as well. And our other, oops, where's our other, th where's our unused thermometer? There we are. We'll log that temperature as well. So now if we can get back alive, that's all sorts, all sorts of science. Plenty to do. Uh, the next little trick, which basically will allow you to open up everything you need to start playing career seriously. So, frankly, you are more than two-thirds of the way to being where you need to be. We are coming in very steep. This is going to be quite the exciting uh, braking maneuver and re-entry. We, uh, we may kill Jeb on this. Quite possible. We do have it saved. There are things we could have done. We could have normalized the orbit and then come in on a much safer, safer trajectory, but uh, that's not the Kerbal way. Yeah, we're traveling three kilometers a second. We've got lots of Delta V, however, left in this lovely little Terrier engine, which I would say use the Terrier for all of your, all of your uh, vacuum work. It's just, it's a wonderful engine. Breaking hard. Down to 2,800 meters per second. This is going to mean we're going to have a steep uh, angle of descent, which is potentially disastrous, but we'll see. Picking up all sorts of shock heating as we hit 50,000 at a speed of 2,600 meters per second. Still dropping. The little terrier is spending the last of its fuel. I think it will get us below, I'm hoping, 2,400 feet per second before it runs out of juice. Or before the uh, heat makes it blow up. Oh, what do we have all that overheating on? Engine is down. We are going to jettison. Oh, don't get so hot that you lose your science. We don't want that science blowing up. So for the descent, we're trying to keep right on the retrograde circle as much as we can, keeping everything conveniently in the uh, in behind the heat shield. 2,000 meters per second at 20,000 feet. 20,000 meters, pardon me. There are no feet in this game. Ooh, we almost ate part of our boot. Oh, we're going to tumble. That's bad. Yeah, we just lost a science experiment. We're coming in so fast. Oh, no, I think we've lost both goo canisters. That's unfortunate. That's a lot of science lost right there. That's my fault for putting those so low down. If we'd angled them and put them up on the capsule, basically where the chutes are, that wouldn't have been an issue. So 
So, words to live by. Put your science uh, in a spot that's actually shielded. Basically, I don't know. What did we lose? We lost one goo canister. That's interesting. What blew up? Uh, oh, it's a rechargeable battery pack and one of the mystery goo units. So, we've still got half of our science. We're not that worried about the battery pack. Terribly unfortunate, though, we could have angled the goo canisters up here with the chutes or even over the doorway since Jeb can't, well, he can EVA once he's on the ground, but he can't EVA in space. Uh, and they would have been shielded from that, but instead we lost one. And Jeb has made it back. Um, we know Jeb has EVA'd previously in the ocean, so there's really not use in doing that. So we'll go ahead and recover. So we made 115 science on that mission alone. Jeb is level 1. Yay, that's very important. Having your pilot actually have some skills helps you no end. Um, we got a lot of money, science, and goodness uh, for going out and swinging around the moon. Even though we didn't actually orbit it. So that actually puts us in a position. We have 179 science uh, in the bank right now. Um, I will go ahead and grab avionics for 45 um, just to show you an easy way to get a bunch more science. The reason we grabbed that was for the landing gear and the little Juno jet engine. Uh, most importantly though, we do have the cash to get electrics, which we will do right away. Electrics is going to open up pretty much everything to you. We just about have enough cash, as a matter of fact, to look into either general construction, which is uh, very useful for passenger tourist flights, which we'll start getting now with the Mark 1 crew cabin, um, and flight control, which is really useful in that we have steerable rudders in there, steerable fins. But the thing I wanted to make sure that I went through especially in this particular episode, is how to round out your science now so that you'll be in a position to really carry on with career. You picked up that advancement in aerodynamics for this specific trick. Grab a Mark I capsule. Grab a Science Junior. Put a... Uh, thermometer on there. Uh, you can use a liquid fuel fuselage for this. I would, you don't need remotely that much fuel. You can actually empty that out. Just have it be a structural component. Stick a goo canister on that as well. Importantly, make Jeb get out of it. Put Bob Kerman the scientist in there. In your utility, since you bought aeronautics, you now have some landing gear. Actually, even before we do that, let's do this in the right order. Grab two of the uh, tiny little liquid fuel fuselages, put them on symmetrically. Those have a little bit of kerosene in them. Put some basic little tiny Juno jet engines on them with the little tiny intakes. Like I told you, it's going to be a jet-powered science dragster. Uh, it's sadly not going to go very fast uh, without self-destructing. But it's going to do what we want it to do, which is to make us about a hundred, mm, 118 or so science uh, pretty painlessly. Those ugly looking struts on the front are there so that you can mount a couple of the steerable landing gear the front of this thing. And yes, they'll probably be crabby and they won't want to steer right, but you're not going to be going very fast, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, these are terribly out of alignment. There we go. They're still towed in, aren't they? Yeah, they're pigeon towed. The reason you put those on those struts out that far uh, is basically so this won't tip over. 
a nice wide wheelbase is your friend on anything that's remotely like a rover. There we go. And uh, just in case, so you don't end up sitting somewhere wondering why you can't do anything because you're out of power, throw a couple of batteries on the back. And now that we have solar panels, you can even put some solar panels on it. You're going to recover this vehicle, so you're going to get this part money back. Uh, the one thing you don't have, unfortunately, and it's because you haven't opened uh, landers yet, you don't have a ladder. Since you don't have a ladder, you're going to want to make sure that Bill does not, f or Bill, excuse me, Bob, your science gerbil, does not fall off of this while you're doing well, your sciencing. And for some reason it started us at night. Let's actually get the sun up. There we go. Okay. So this little science rover, you're going to drive to the seven or so biomes in Kerbal Space Center. You can drive down to the beach if you like. That's another biome. Uh, the grasslands are a biome as well. We've been there in a spaceship, so not an issue. This, uh, the landing strip itself here is a biome. The reason you're taking Bob, Bob can only do this once during this run through, so let's go ahead and take his crew report here. That's fine. Um, that's actually not the important bit. Bob is a scientist, can store and reset science gear. So you can use the materials bay and use your mystery goo, save that science. You can do the same with your thermometer, save that science. EVA Bob, don't accidentally walk off of the ship because as I said you don't have a ladder. You just take a few steps back up off the ladder, have him take the data from the thermometer, collect data from the goo canister, remove the data, restore the goo canister. That means that can now be used again in another biome. Same with the materials bay. Collect data, remove data, restore the materials bay. Oops. First thing I do is, of course, walk off of this. Uh, when he climbs back in here, okay, get in there. You'll note when he climbs in, he's now stored the temperature scan from the run runway, the mystery goo data from the runway, and the materials bay data from the runway. That's all stored in the capsule now. So you can take your brakes off at this point. Um, you really, really, oops, no, you really, really don't want to do what I just did and hit that to uh, full acceleration. So using your little jet engines, get this thing rolling. Turn the jet engines off almost immediately because uh, it's not going to be terribly stable and you really don't want to flip it. But you can now drive around and visit all of the locations at Kerbal Space Center and do science. Uh, you won't be able to go into reverse in this, so don't point yourself into a wall and stop. Um, it only goes forward. It turns reasonably sharply, but as I said, don't block yourself in. You don't have to be right against the buildings. The building and the lawn area around it um, are the given biomes. Um, so I'm going to not bore you by going to all of them. I'm going to stop the video here and do that and then show you the amount of science you get and show you what we're going to do with that. Okay, so be right back. So we've pottered around and quite probably missed some of the biomes. Um, but we'll go ahead and recover the science dragster now. Bring Bob back, see how much science he's amassed. He picked up 125.1 science uh, for effectively no cost. We recovered the entirety of that vehicle and are in a position where we can 
little, do a little more shopping. I think we're going to have to go with flight controls, not having aerodynamically steerable fins is an issue. Uh, with 124 left, though, the question is general construction uh, with the nifty crew cabin and the larger decouplers. Possibly heavy rocketry, which does give us uh, some bigger engines, although not bigger fuel tanks yet. Uh, you do need to get propulsion, or excuse me, not propulsion systems, but fuel systems as well. Fuel systems on its own gives us, Im importantly, uh, the external fuel duct, which allows for asparagus staging and other interesting things, as well as giving us the extended uh, stock FLT-800 fuel tank, uh, which again is going to allow for longer range. That, that's going to allow to work uh, the Moon and Minmus quite easily, actually. Conversely, at this point, you could look at things like landing. Um, other than the fact that it's getting you a bigger heat shield, some aircraft landing legs, and a larger parachute, not terribly useful initially. Space exploration, ladders and barometers, both of which are nice. Um, we're going to be at a point now where determining what you want, where you want to go with your career is going to determine where you go from this point. At, at this stage, you've basically bought out almost all of the first three tiers. Uh, general construction we could throw in quite easily. It tends to be the last of that tier that I buy. This next buy is determining where you're going. Are you going to go into um, hardcore landing and science? Uh, I usually do. At this point, picking up space exploration and the barometer again is going to allow for more science uh, as you're doing all of your other contracts. Uh, conversely, for me, I will often look at picking up fuel systems. With the larger fuel tanks that are available here, you can keep the part counts on vehicles down. Uh, that means you don't have to upgrade as quickly as you would otherwise. Um, we have upgraded the launch pad though, so that's not a huge concern here. Actually, the the Weight is not an issue. The part count for the VAB is. Uh, the VAB is still capped at 30, so having a larger fuel tank means that for fewer parts you can get more Delta V in a rocket. Um, keep that in mind. As is, this gets you to the point where literally you are ready to move on to Minmus. Uh, you are ready, post Minmus especially, to start moving out into the system at large. Getting to Minmus, doing the science that's available there, is important. At this point, it's lower gravity than the moon. You can get probes down on both. You do have remote tech, so that's not an issue. I generally, at this point, I would tend to buy space exploration. I can put small remote landers down on almost anywhere I want to at this point, um, with a little luck and with some upgrades to the... Uh, to the tracking station, which we do have money for. Uh, so let's go ahead and buy landing. I'm doing that mostly for the barometer and for the fact that it opens up the advanced exploration node. Advanced exploration opens the mobile processing lab. The mobile processing lab will cure all of your science issues for the rest of the game. Uh, basically getting one of those either on the ground on Minmus or in orbit around Minmus with a scientist in it, taking your data, leaving it there at that lab and processing it, you will not be short of science for the rest of the game. Um, money will be your main concern moving forwards. That's a matter of looking carefully at your contracts, determining how you can best combine contracts, and how you can keep your construction costs down. At this point, your major construction costs will eventually be an upgrade to the VAB, which for some reason I entered rather than just clicking on Get Out. You can probably put this off for a while. 
your max part supported R30 ES. You can work within that fairly well for quite some time. Um, it's also very expensive. It's a 225,000 fund update. The other and even more expensive upgrade you'll look at cost-wise is the R&D Center. Um, at 451000 it's the single most expensive upgrade you're going to have to deal with. You will have to deal with that shortly. Uh, currently, your research science limit is 100 points. That means you can buy things up into the tier 90, effectively the fifth tier of technology, at which point you have to, have, you have to upgrade this. You're, you're just stuck. So you're going to want to make money. Making money means that, as annoying and sad as it sounds, the first building upgrade you're going to do, quite probably, is mission control to go from two possible active contracts to seven. Um, painful, I know, worth doing. Similarly, the tracking station here is not doing you a whole lot of good at this point. It has <laughs> limited utility. It's a hundred and fifty thousand upgrade. Upgrading it actually allows you to see patch comics. Um, those are visible in the map. That starts making it much easier to maneuver. I'd say go ahead and get that. It's just it's a it's a painful buy. It's a necessary buy at this point. That's going to leave you with about a hundred and twenty, hundred and twenty two thousand which is a fair amount of funds other than the fact that you're facing two large upgrades here. At this point in career, your science is pretty much sorted. From this basis, again, looking possibly at picking up uh, fuel systems, picking up advanced exploration, and then I'd probably backtrack slightly and pick up heavy rocketry just to get places faster you don't have a lot of building out you're going to have to do from this point on. You're, you're on the verge of getting advanced exploration and as I said that's going to be your mobile processing lab. To get that though, since that is one tier out, you're going to have to upgrade your science center. So at this point um, the upgrade to mission control is vital. You now have access to a lot of contracts. Um, you're going to start seeing tourist contracts, which sure enough, there's some that have cropped up in here. They're just quick money contracts. Um, these are fly by the moon, suborbital space flight on Kerbin. We've already flown past the moon. We know we can do that. We do have to build a ship that will allow us to do that at this point. But you're in a position now where you can start to pick and choose, earn the money you're going to need for your science upgrade, and from here on out, you should be okay. Just keep an eye at this point on the balance of funding because funds are going to be a limiting factor for a while here. Uh, your science won't be, as I've repeatedly said, you're now in a position to deal with that. Um, that's probably a good place to leave this. Past this, it does come down to player choice. What route you're going to build through the tree, what are you going to prioritize? So it's much harder to say anything generically useful to all players really once you've reached the point that you've done the little uh, science rover uh, jet dragster and you've opened the nodes we have open you're pretty much free and clear to sail. Uh, I do recommend for people that especially as they move on in career and have many many specific questions go over to the Kerbal forums uh, browse through the miles and miles of brilliant advice from people far smarter than me uh, see what they have to say. Look at the videos there. Uh, do be aware when you're looking at videos online, make sure that people are talking about the KSP version you are playing. Right now we are in 1.05. Previous things are not necessarily accurate because the game does change and the physics do evolve as it goes along. Okay, and that's it. it it's kind of a terribly boring second tutorial there, but hopefully this will make it easier for you moving forward. Uh, thanks again. You have a great day. Bye-bye.